Have you ever had this problem where you're tracking a scene and it just isn't working out well? Well, don't worry, uh, we're here to save the day. How about this one? We've all seen this one before where it's just floating. It's not really tracking, is it? Uh, this tutorial is here to save the day. Uh, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to help solve common issues and help you get the results that you expect. Now, if you haven't already, there is already an MTracker 3D tutorial for pre-tracking hints for the best tracking results. But in this tutorial, we're gonna go over common problems if any of those didn't seem to help you out. We've got a little bit more, but be sure to check out that tutorial as well. So we're gonna start out with a really common problem, which is whenever you are doing some tracking over something that is highly reflective, for instance, this water right here. You saw in our intro there, we were having that kind of floating. Now, the reason this is happening is because we have these reflections here and we need to get rid of those. And as a matter of fact, we're gonna get rid of all of those. So here we go. First things first, let's add a little bit of contrast. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just something that will help our tracker. So now let's go over and open our masks. We will pick up our draw mask, put it on there. Make sure our draw mask is selected. I'm going to set this down to 50% just so I can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna just add that mask along the beach there. Boom, invert our mask. Let's go ahead and make sure that our transforms have a keyframe and our control points have a keyframe. I'm gonna press my down arrow to get to the end of the clip and let's bring these points down. Great, and then let's just kind of back it up so we can watch to make sure that those are following along. Go to the center of my clip just to make sure. And there we go. So yes, indeed, we are only tracking the top of this frame, but it will absolutely work. Don't you worry. So here we go. Let's pick up MTracker 3D, apply it, make sure that it is beneath our color board and our draw mask. We will track the footage and we'll see you on the other side. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and disable our draw mask. We can disable our color board as well. Or actually, you know what? I like that color. I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit so it's not so contrasty. Let's go over and make sure that we have copied our track. We'll go back over to MTracker 3D. Uh, for this one, why don't we do a 2D? So let's do title 2D number nine. That'll be good. Make sure that it moves all the way over. Let's paste our track. Boom. And you're gonna get this red arrow because that's your mask, that's okay. You can see now that all of this area has been tracked and it's tracked fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just come on down a bit and let's hold shift and I'm just gonna set it right here on the edge. Let's bring our content scale down. And why don't we just go ahead and adjust some of our rotation. There we go, pretty cool. Now, something else. Remember, we can't put it out over the water, but let's say we wanted to, that's okay. You can take your content position and we can just move it forward on Z. Let's move it over a little bit on X. There we go. And down on Y. Let's go down because we are over water. I'm going to turn off my shadows, but I'm gonna turn on my reflection there. Reflectivity is pretty bright, so let's go ahead and bring that down. We'll just blur it just a little bit. Change our fall off end distance there. So it just kind of goes in. And now let's see how that looks. Check that out over top of the water. Really cool. Now, something that you'll notice is we don't see our reflections there a bit that is gonna be due to the rotation. So why don't we just rotate that forward and then boom. So notice on X, if we go back too far, your reflections disappear. That's because the digital camera is essentially on the same plane. So if you just push forward a bit on X and just kind of mess around with the rotation, you'll get your reflections back. So that's another trick for you. So now we have that out and that looks really cool. Honestly, I think it'd look even cooler if it was even closer. So why don't we just keep pushing it forward? Really great. I'm gonna go ahead and render this so y'all can see how it looks real quick. And there you go. Now it's tracked beautifully. We've got some amazing reflections. They look awesome and we're gonna fly right over top of it. Fantastic. I love the way that looks. 
really, really quick, really simple. All right, moving on. Let's go ahead and delete this one. Now we are gonna show you one more mask and that is, uh, this is another common issue that folks have had where we've got, uh, we're gonna kind of push forward. I'm just gonna trim this clip to the area that we're wanting to mask, to the area that we're wanting to track. We're kind of pushing forward and we've got all this traffic going on. That is what we are gonna need to mask out because that is gonna cause a lot of problems. So again, let's go ahead and add our contrast a bit. We will add our draw mask. We will add our points and we are just masking out all of this moving traffic here, okay? Really quick, really fast, and it's kind of the whole center of our frame there. But well, let's go ahead and move this out. Boom, we are going to invert. Let's set keyframes on our control points and our position. Press the down arrow, and then just make that move really quickly. Move our control points a bit to be back there. There you go. And as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that this line has some cars moving too. So we'll just go ahead and mask that out as well. Great, I see a few cars moving back there. Now these way off in the distance, I don't think those are gonna be an issue. So I do see some cars moving over there. So I will just go ahead and get rid of that. Great, there we go. All right, let's go to M-Tracker 3D, apply M-Tracker 3D, track, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, now that we're done, let's go ahead and disable that draw mask. We will copy our track. Go over and let's find a title. Uh, why don't we do, matter of fact, instead of a title, why don't we do like a target? That'd be fun. So one of our pointers, go ahead and grab that, bring it back. Let's paste our track, good. And as always, we are going to have those red errors there, but not to worry. Why don't we go ahead and just hold shift down and we will set a point right there. I'm gonna go over, you can see that's pretty small, but it is tracked very well. That looks awesome. So why don't we just scale that up? Go ahead and look at our shadows. What kind of shadows are we working with here? Yeah, they're already pretty close. So we're going to adjust our light angle and rotation. Let's go ahead and render that out, see how it looks. And there you go, a perfect track and we're not having all of those issues that we were having in our previous version that we did not mask. All right, that looks good. So let's go ahead and delete that, come over. Now we've finally done all the different types of masking that has been an issue in the past. So this is a really cool trick. Now, this shot obviously needs a ton of contrast, but I want you to notice something else when I hit play. It is moving very, very slowly, and this clip absolutely will not track at this speed. So there is an awesome way to fix that. So first of all, we are obviously going to add quite a bit of contrast just so we can get some detail in there. We are going to press Command R and we're gonna speed this up. Let's go ahead and speed it up four times. And now when I hit play, you can see we've got a good bit more movement. We've got that parallax happening that we're gonna need. Now let's apply M-Tracker 3D with it sped up. We will go ahead and track. That tracked really, really fast. Let's go ahead and hit copy track. Let's go over and we'll find something else here. I think for this one, why don't we just stick with some text? So let's go ahead and just grab one of our 3D texts, bring it back. We're going to paste the track. There you go, boom. And let's set our point maybe right about here. So you can see that it tracked pretty good. It's not perfect. So what we're gonna do is delete that and why don't we actually change this to eight times and let's go ahead and retrack this same clip. Let's go ahead and grab some text here. We will bring it back, paste, well, let's copy, copy our track, paste our track. And now let's see how we're doing there we go. And now you can see, look at how perfectly that has tracked because we sped it up. I mean, that looks awesome. Now, 
we want to go back to our original speed, okay? So we just want this to be super subtle, right? Here is the coolest thing, the coolest little trick whenever you have this issue. Let's set back to normal. And now if we bring this title back, M Tracker 3D is automatically going to adjust those frames. And look at that, the track still works perfectly. It's moving nice and slow, very subtle, but that parallax is still definitely there that we all look for with M Tracker 3D. And after a little bit of fine tuning on our shadows and color, and there you have it. One of my favorite tricks for a situation like that, if you have a really slow moving clip that you still want to track some text in. Moving on, let's now look at, I think we've got one more we wanted to look at. So this is a clip in which we uh, have been sent by an editor and it's all one clip so you can see oh there's some changes there's some cuts happening let's say that we want to have some text going on above that bridge there and we've got a lot going on in these scenes right so obviously you would not want to track this entire clip because there's too much happening not only is there too much happening but you really can't track multiple scenes within one video clip anyway so you do need to blade cut these apart so the best thing that we need to do, we're not gonna track those. We don't really want anything there, but we're gonna want to use our arrow keys and just find that frame where that cut is happening. And let's go ahead and blade cut. So now we know that we have a separated clip here. And then let's find our next clip, which is gonna be about right here. We're gonna continue to use our arrows. There it is. And so now we have separated clips that we can track if we would like. So why don't we start with this one first. Let's go ahead and add our contrast as always. All right, so once we've added our contrast, let's go ahead and add our draw mask. And this one's gonna be a little bit trickier because I want to keep the bridge in there, but we need to get rid of the water and the traffic. So we're just gonna kind of come up around our bridge we don't have to keep the entire bridge, but every little bit helps when we're tracking this stuff. And then we will go up around our water there. There we go. Let's go ahead and invert the mask. We will go ahead and set our transforms and our control points. Press our down arrow and back just a bit. That was good to see that we had a black frame there. We need to cut that out as well. We're moving very quickly here. Nothing has to be perfect. We just want it to be close. And we want to keep as much information in there as we possibly can. So here we go. It's moving pretty good. As a matter of fact, I need to start those down just a bit because we do have some traffic on that bridge. Here we go, kind of moving. Boom, great, that looks fantastic. Let's add another draw mask now. And we are going to mask out the water. All right, so now let's go to M Tracker 3D. We will apply M Tracker 3D. Let's go ahead and track. All right, and now that we're done, let's go ahead and turn our draw masks off on each of those. We can copy our track. Let's go find something that we think will look cool. I think that this font and text looks really cool. So bring our title layer back. Let's go ahead and move forward. We need to paste our track. Boom, done. And let's just go ahead and move forward just a bit. I'm going to set that right there on the edge of our building. And that looks really cool. Kind of floating there. And we can find some different points to see where we might get the best track for what we're trying to do there that looks really good cool 
So now we can make adjustments to our content position so that we can get the best look. Why don't we make our title color something that works with our scene a little bit better. There we go. I'm gonna turn off my shadows and there you have it. So we have that coming in. There we're saying aim point or whatever spot we are in. And we have gotten rid of all the reflections and all of the vehicles. So I'm going to turn off my animation in. And why don't we work backwards now? Because we want that kind of same look so that it looks like we're cutting to that same thing, right? So we're gonna kind of do a similar process. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna just press Command C, Command Shift V. I'm going to turn on, just make sure that our color is the same there. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna walk you through it because you know what to do at this point. Awesome, looks good. All of our reflections are tracked out for the most part. Let's go ahead and apply M Tracker 3D. All right, so now that we're done, let's disable our draw masks. We are going to first grab this title, Command C and Command V, and we're going to add it to this next section so that we know for a fact it is the same. Now let's copy our track and we will paste our track into this title here. Done. And let's move forward. Let's go ahead and bring that size down a good bit. I'm gonna make sure the animation in and out are both off. So we've got aim point and aim point. And you can always go in and just make fine tune adjustments as you see fit so that it has the look that you want. I kind of think that it'd look cool if it was just kind of floating up pretty high above. So why don't we make that change over here as well so that we've got a little bit better look on the entire thing. So we're kind of just saying the aim point is sitting there floating above. So aim point floating above, and then there it is still floating above. And there you have it. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Thank you so much for checking out this quick support tutorial for M-Tracker 3D. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.